Hi, I'm hand spinning teacher Abby Frankemont. Welcome to my home where we're going to spend some time looking at some used spinning wheels and talking about what makes them viable or not viable as actual spinning wheels. Maybe you found a great value on Craigslist or it looks like it's a great value on Craigslist or eBay or a local classified site. And now what you're wondering is whether or not this is a spinning wheel that you actually want to take home with you. This is actually my first spinning wheel. This is my family's old great wheel. It was saved from a barn in Maine sometime in the late 1960s or early 1970s by my parents, and it is now mine. I learned to spin on it when I was a little kid. Uh, this is a great wheel, or rocking wheel, or wool wheel. As you can see, it has a very large drive wheel over there. Um, it is, I believe, 46 inches in diameter, so quite sizable. Uh, and then it's got this stuff over here where uh, there's basically a spike on here and what happens when you turn the big drive wheel is it causes this spike or spindle to turn very very quickly as well enabling spinning uh, with a different sort of method than what many are used to seeing now so it kind of looks like this. Spinning on the great wheel is different from spinning on flyer wheels because you don't have a bobbin and flyer you just have this driven spindle where when this goes around and everything boings off the tip, that's the technical term I like to use, twist comes out. I'm moving very slowly right now, but with this big drive wheel, I can go quite fast and take steps back and forth, and that's why they call it a walking wheel. So now I'm gonna reverse just a little bit, come in over here, and then turn this to wind on, coming back forward, and coming back out. You'll note this is a one-handed grafting method going on here. A lot of the wheels that I see listed on Craigslist and other places for sale that are used wheels are walking wheels like this one, but many of them are missing the actual business end, which is to say this metal spike right here, the spindle, um, and in some cases they're missing the bat's head or other assembly that it goes into. So if you don't have this stuff and then a spike on it, it may be a deal breaker. You need to know if you can actually get a drive band around here, that's this band that goes around the drive wheel and over to here. Uh, you need to know that you have the ability to get those things all set up and going. One of the things that's really advantageous about wheels like this, great wheels, is that if you have most of the pieces, you can usually find a way to make it work. However, if what you're looking for is something that is antique and accurate and authentic, then you definitely want to be sure that you have the original parts, and this assembly is an important original part. This is going to look different on different great wheels depending on what you've got, but here is one of them to look at at least. As you can see, I've got nothing here but a spindle that has all this yarn on it. Now when I turn the drive wheel, you'll just have to take my word that I'm doing it right now. But when I turn the drive wheel, that spindle goes around and as you can see when it does, it kind of boings off the tip, the yarn boings off the tip, and every time that it does, that's a new twist going in. I'm moving the drive wheel very, very slowly right now. Now to wind on, I reverse to the point that there, and then let this wind on and then come in with my hand. See here, my hand is going to come in closer. And then I start spinning again, coming off the tip. This great wheel has a spindle that attaches using a bat's head. That's this paddly type piece of wood here that connects into this block down here. Um, it can be tilted and turned. You loosen this screw and it can be tilted and turned and you need to do that in order to adjust the tension and sometimes exactly how the drive band is connecting. And then you tighten this wooden screw back down. Uh, as you can see, the drive band goes around this little pulley here, which rotates inside this hollowed out area and causes this to turn. The spindle and everything associated with it are attached to the bat's head using braided corn husks. These are not original, they were braided in the 1970s during the initial restoration of this wheel. Originally there was an iron spike that held corn husks in here, I remember that from when I was a little kid, but at some point during a move that was lost and so my father replaced this with a stainless steel double pointed needle as you see that is now holding this together. So like I say, with a great wheel you can usually find a way to make things work. I'm going to put the bat's head back where it goes. So this wheel, which is almost 200 years old, as in the wheel part itself is, is almost 200 years old, uh, has seen better days, and it had seen better days when my parents rescued it in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, so I'm going to show you one of the field expedient fixes that was made. As, I'm, as I rotate this slowly, you'll see that here 
is where this was originally joined with these nails. But some of this wood has cracked and split along here. It'll become very obvious as we do it. And so my father lashed around it with cotton, with cotton yarn that kept it together. Uh, it would actually be fine to take that off at this point, but I just have left it there because it doesn't hamper anything in it. You can see that this crack is significant and covers quite a bit of the wheel. We're going to look at this antique wheel that someone brought me to check out. Um, this is a wheel commonly called a flax wheel, and we'll talk more about how I know that in just a little bit. But we're going to start by giving an orientation to the parts of the wheel, as you can see them right now. Right here that I'm touching with my hands, we call this the drive wheel, it's the big wheel. And it's what is made to go around when you step on the treadle for this wheel, which is down underneath the bench, which is the part right here that holds the legs together. Uh, these two uprights here, front and back, we're looking at this from the front of the wheel. In other words, you would be sitting right here, more or less, and spinning over here. Uh, these two uprights hold the axle shaft that goes through the center of the drive wheel, and that's what it rotates around. We are going to see a view from the back of this as well. Uh, over here we have where the action really happens when you're spinning, and that's the bobbin and flyer array. We'll have close-ups of this in just a little bit also. Um, the flyer is the part that goes around like this, and the bobbin is the spool that goes in the middle and that your stored yarn will be on as you spin. We'll talk more about all of that. Uh, right here, we have an assembly called the Mother of All. That's this bar across here with these two uprights in it. The uprights are called Maidens, and the Mother of All has to scoot back and forth. In this case, I achieved that by turning this little cranky handle here which has a, a screw, a wooden screw in it that moves this back and forth. And that's necessary and important. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Um, the way that I know that this is a flax wheel is because it comes with this, mostly here, distaff, which fits into a hole right here. And uh, it should have another piece, an upright piece, that, uh, that is actually what you would store fiber on, specifically flax fiber that has been prepared for spinning into linen yarn traditionally speaking. This is not essential to most contemporary spinning, uh, but it can be nice to have. This one is not entirely complete because it is missing this part, but it's mostly here. You could rig up a distaff in a lot of clever different ways having these pieces here, but you can spin with this wheel with the distaff on or off. Up to you. We're going to have it off for the remainder of this video. This is the view from the back side of this wheel. In other words, the side that would be facing towards somebody who was looking at you as you sat at this wheel. The side that is on the back of the wheel as you were sitting at it spinning. Um, if you look at this, you'll see that this comes right out. It just lifts right out of there. And on one side, on one side there is a straight shaft. And on this side, it's curved. You've got this curved action. And this is important in terms of uh, making this go around and actually operate. So now we're going to get to our next and somewhat more important missing piece because this crank right here that goes around needs to be connected with something to the treadle down at the bottom, which is what I'm just touching with my feet right here, with my foot, one foot. Um, as this wheel goes around, which the footman rod, normally it's a rod, a firm piece of wood or metal that goes around means that when you move the treadle up and down, that linear motion is converted into circular and this goes around and around. Then we're going to have a dry fan that we attach later, which connects over here to the bobbin and flyer array that we looked at earlier. Um, for the time being, to get this working, I have a piece of clothesline, which actually is what came with this. And you can see I'm lifting the back of the treadle and it goes up and down. And I'm coming over here and I am going to tie this piece of clothesline, this temporary solution, onto the crankshaft, onto this crank right here. This is just to find out whether or not this is a functional wheel. And the way we're going to find that out is by spinning on it first. Now with my makeshift footman in place, that's to say the piece of clothesline, I want to find out how this wheel treadles. Some wheels use a string footman as a matter of course. There's no way to tell whether this one would have or would have had an original one that was stiff. Um, so this will work, but it may not perform ideally. 
So I'm going to get this wheel started first by turning it with my hand and then I'm going to treadle to keep going. So I'm turning it with my hand, now I'm going to start treadling. Because there is no pin here, there should be a pin that kind of holds this shaft in place. Because there's no pin here, sometimes this gets a little bit jumpy when we treadle, or if we treadle really fast. But we can see that the wheel spins fairly true and isn't super noisy, doesn't have a loud thunk, and so we're probably okay on that front. The next thing we have to do is put on a drive band and see if it turns the bobbin and flies. Once we know that it treadles okay, we need to get a drive band on here and see if it spins normally, if when we treadle it turns the bobbin and flyer in the way that we expect. So I've got some cotton yarn that I'm going to use for a drive band for this for this purpose. And I'm going in here so that it can get around the wheel. It wouldn't be able to go around the wheel if it was outside those uprights. And then I'm going to come through and go around once in one groove, come back around, and pass this to myself again. And you do want to make sure this goes all the way around the wheel. So I'm threading it again. And this time through the bobbin. Kind of holding this here. Making sure this goes. And I can bring this side up over here and get ready to tie it. But before I tie it, I want to make sure that I have moved the mother of all as close in as I can to the wheel. So that's, there we are. You can see this doesn't go any further. And now at this point, I'm going to tie this. It's pretty firmly and I'm going to use a surgeon's knot which is like a square knot except you go through one more time and that'll hold it tight. As you can see there's a little bit of slack, not a super big deal. We're going to adjust that. We're also going to trim this to length and then we've got one more thing we're going to do. I'm going to tie a surgeon's knot which is similar to a square knot only different but not much. So I'm going to cross this over and come under You've all seen that part before, right? So now I'm going to do this one more time, like that. You can see I've got a few times it's crossed over there. And I'm bringing the top part, comes here, it comes above, bringing it above, and then it's going to come under, and then under one more time. See that? And now I'm going to pull this tight. And this is a knot that will not slip. Now that I've got a drive band on, what I want to know is whether the bobbin and flyer will turn independently of each other, whether they turn separately at separate speeds. Right now, it doesn't look like that's happening. See, it looks like they're turning at the same time, turning together, and you can tell because this little chip in this bobbin is staying in the same place relative to the flyer arm. See, it's still just right here. So that is not ideal, so let's see what else we can see. Oh, well look, one of the first things I notice is that this is wood and this is leather. This is not original. This is a little piece of wood that was carved to hold this here when this wheel was used as a decoration. Normally these uh, things here that hold these leathers, they're called leathers, are made of leather. So to figure out what's going on there, I need to take off the bobbin and flyer. This is a normal thing that you'll do a lot of the time with a wheel, especially if you have a wheel with interchangeable bobbins, you will be doing this. If you only have one, you may not do it very often. But I need to do this to inspect and see what I'm looking at. So. I've got to take the bobbin off. So to do that, I turn, in this case, the front maiden twists. It twists just a little bit and this leather bends. And then this comes out. And then this comes out. And then I just take the drive band off. So let's talk a little bit about bobbins there. and flyers. Um, this one is old and you can see that it's been used and has, has done work because of where you've got these smooth spots worn and places that it rested. Um, the flyer is the part with the arms, and the bobbin is this part in the middle that's like a spool. In a perfect world, this turns easily. I don't know if you can see, but this is 
not exactly turning easily. This is really kind of grabbed hold here. So I need to take it off. Um, the way this works is yarn comes off the bobbin, gets threaded through these hooks on the flyer arm, comes around, goes through this hole, and then it's threaded through this right here, this hole, which is called the orifice. So to take this apart, we have to be gentle because this is an older wheel and these things screw on um, with hand cut threads and so forth. Uh, they also are commonly cross threaded, which is, or they are commonly threaded in the op cut, the threads are cut in the opposite direction from that which is conventional. So to undo it, I'm going the way that we normally would go to tighten. Holding the flyer firmly and turning just this pulley, which is called a whorl. As we open this up, you can see, well, kind of see, the threads inside here. On antique wheels, these uh, whorls and flyers and bobbins are all individually made to fit specific ones. They are not interchangeable. So now I, I've got that off. I want to see if I can get this bobbin off. And wow, it's really stuck on here. And it's a little bit of a fragile bobbin, so I want to be careful about this and figure out what's going on with that. So right here, this is an action item that lets me know that on this wheel, if I want to use it for spinning on, I've got some serious work to do. Okay, now that I've got the flyer cleaned up and the bobbin turns independently of the rest of everything, smoothly and neatly and easily, uh, now I'm ready to put everything back together. I was also missing the back leather for this, so I substituted uh, some yarn because as a spinner I solve all my problems with yarn. So I'm going to start by putting the drive band on where it needs to go, roughly speaking, and then I'm going to put this through these loops of yarn that I tied around back here where it needs to go, put this through the hole in the front leathers, and then this turns. See, it, it twists, and now it's snug. And so now, when the drive wheel goes around, both things turn, but you can turn only one of them at a time. So if I hold the flyer steady, I can make it so that the bobbin still turns. Now we need to get the flyer threaded up. So we bring our leader off the bobbin, up through some of these arms on the side, and yes, you'll notice that there are some broken off ones there and over here. That's not a deal breaker, although it is not ideal. Now I'm going to put my threading hook for my orifice through here, and you can see that this is very small and can be a little bit fiddly to get an orifice hook through, but that is the threading path for this and how that goes. Now with the wheel threaded up, we're ready to actually see if we can use it for making yarn. And we can. Now, you'll probably notice it's a little bit chattery. That's something that would be solved by replacing that back leather with actual leather and with uh, judicious lubrication. So that's to say the use of lots of oil while it's coming up to speed. Um, also, you'll notice that this is fine yarn that I'm spinning, and that's because that's really what this wheel is meant for. You'll see that uh, it does not have a massive bobbin. It doesn't have... Uh, huge flyer, and this is really exactly what it was meant for producing in quantity, although mainly from, from flax, as I say, due to that distaff that we are actually not using right now. I'm spinning wool fairly fine, fairly happily, and so this wheel is one that, although it needs a little bit of tender love and care, can work, does work, is a real spinning wheel, and all of that sort of thing. All right, so some things in general that you want to look at for a go-no-go no go on buying a wheel or not, if it's an antique or used, are does the drive wheel go around fairly smooth? Is it is it warped? Does it kind of spin off-center? This one spun just fine. We checked that out. Um, does it have a bobbin and flyer array is really super essential. If it doesn't have a bobbin and flyer array, that is uh, going to be either impossible or expensive to replace. So that may be something that you don't want to get into. It may be something you want to get into, but then you probably don't need a list of things to check out about whether or not an antique wheel is working. Um, and there needs to be something that you can use to tension the drive band to change how tight this drive band is. In the case of this wheel, that, that's this, which moves the screw here, which moves 
the mother of all backward and forward so that we can change the drive band tension. Sometimes it's a, something that causes it to tilt or a number of other things. Uh, if you are not familiar with mechanisms for how that kind of stuff works, it's going to be hard to check out a lot of old wheels. Um, is lack of a footman a deal breaker? No. Is lack of uh, the appropriate leathers a deal breaker? No. All of those are things that do require a fair amount of work though and it helps if you know how spinning wheels work pretty well if you're going to get into those so would i recommend it for a first wheel maybe not now by comparison to two older and more beleaguered wheels i have a newer wheel i want to take a look at here and this is a Louette victoria they started to be manufactured in uh, 2006. this one weighs about seven pounds you can see i can pick it up with you know well one finger really it's not very heavy uh, and it folds up very small. So now we're going to set this up and see how this is how this is working. So this wheel doesn't look very much like the other wheel with a flyer that we checked out, but it operates essentially the same way, although there are some mechanical differences because this is a very small portable one that folds up itty bitty. The first thing I'm going to do is come over here and take the flyer off. And now I am going to lay this down on those feet. And I've got one little thing here that I pull so that it folds up, folds up, and goes into place. And here's this. And this is our footman rod. And it's got this cup connector that attaches onto this middle part and then a little locking ring that snaps in. And now it's good to go. Now you can see that it is possible to treadle it. That will make the big wheel go around. To get the flyer set up, I take a bobbin and a flyer, place the bobbin onto the flyer shaft, and come in here. And this is my Scotch Tension Brake Band. It's going to go around the bobbin, and then this just slots in and snaps right into place. And now we are set up and ready to spin. So this wheel looks like it's been sitting idle for a little while. Okay, it's been sitting idle for about a week, and uh, it does work. It works pretty good. It's got a little bit of noise, which usually just means that it needs to be gone over and have screws tightened up if there's anything coming loose, and that it wants oil on an ongoing basis, but as you can see, it spins just fine. So this wheel, as you can see, didn't really take anything in terms of setup or verifying that it works. It just works right away. Uh, also, you'll notice that it has a much larger bobbin than our antique wheel and a wider variety of things. This one can be threaded without, uh, without a flyer hook, and the newer Louette flyers even are easier to do that with. Um, this one has a cat, helpfully moving through the shot. Um, cat not included with purchase of used wheel. This one's not for sale anyway. I use it all the time every time I travel, or a lot of the time when I travel. Uh, this one has its sliding flyer hooks, not a deal breaker because they're available new from Louette. Uh, it had tons of bobbins with it, still not a deal breaker because those are available new from Louette. Uh, this is a spring that's on here for the Scotch Tension brake band. Again, springs, you can buy springs anywhere, so that's not a big deal. This brake band is not what originally came with it. It's a little bit of crochet cotton and that's fine. This drive band, this stretchy cotton drive band, again, available new from Louette. Um, so none of those things are deal breakers. Missing parts on a wheel like this, some of them can be a little bit pricey, but you can easily use the internet to find out what they would go for, and that's not a big deal. Um, but you do want to make sure that you can loosen and tighten this, and it causes the spring to move back and forth. Um, if it doesn't, then those will be things that you have to go shopping for. Uh, you want to be sure that this connector moves and that, that comes off so that you can fold this up. Um, and apart from that, you're pretty much good to go. So a lot of these things are reasons why I usually say that a new spinner should look for a used wheel only if they're buying it from somebody who already spins, because additionally the person they're buying it from should be able to tell you uh, whatever you need to know that's specific to the wheel. Very helpful cat down here. So do you want to buy a used or antique wheel? Well, it depends. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful, at least in giving you a couple of things to look at and think through to know whether or not the wheel that you're looking at is in good operating condition if you can't take a spinner with you. Always my number one choice is to take a spinner with you. 
if you possibly can, because he or she will know more about wheels than they're going to be able to think of to tell you when you go to evaluate things and check stuff out. Um, in general, if this is going to be your first or only wheel, I would usually lean towards recommending a newer used wheel, like uh, the Louette Victoria or some of the other new, still being made wheels that are on the market today. Uh, this doesn't mean you should rule out antique wheels, but it does mean that, as you saw, there may be a bunch more work in getting them up and running, and if you don't already know how to spin how wheels should work, that may be prohibited. My helper Pai Mei here thinks I've taken way too long talking about this stuff without paying attention to him, so uh, he's going to be in this last shot. Uh, he encourages me to remind you that one of the things about antique wheels is that if they were really fantastic performers, most commonly they were going to be used until they fell apart or wore out. And this is true for most antique equipment of whatever variety, not just for spinning and weaving. So a lot of the time the antiques that you find that appear to be in good condition are ones that didn't really perform as well as they could have or that just didn't see a lot of use. So they may not have been great wheels to start out with. Terrific wheels, that is. Not great wheels like the big walking wheel. Uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, do feel free to uh, email me at abby at abbysyarns.com if you have questions about stuff, and uh, check out my other YouTube videos. Thank you.